He joins us, Mark. St. Augustine, the oldest city in the United States. It's known for its Spanish colonial architecture, its Atlantic Ocean beaches, rich history and landmarks, and its food. And speaking of food, it's known for something quite unique to this area, the daddle pepper. St. Augustine is the daddle pepper capital of the world. Today, we are going on a journey learning all about this unique pepper. We will hear from various experts, from farmers and daddle sauce manufacturers, to a local pioneer that took the pepper to a national stage, and someone with family ties to the heritage of cooking with the pepper. We will also do some digging and find some historic documents and scientific research to get an understanding of its history and origin. First stop, Endorphin Farms. I met up with Scott Martin and Adam Fair to learn about the industry. For over 20 years, they have been in the business of co-packing sauces. They work with over 170 companies and have a ton of experience with the Daddle Pepper. After learning about what they do as a company, I spoke with Adam to learn more about the Daddle Pepper. Adam, what is it with St. Augustine? Why does the Daddle Pepper thrive here? Uh, probably a combination of factors um, from humidity, temperature, geographical location, um, the drainage in the soil. It just takes off here. It's, again, it's like the Vidalia onion of the peppers where it just does so well here that people just say, hey, this is, this is the place where it grows the best. Why is it so popular? Well, the daddles are really popular because one, it is, it is hot enough that it's, you can call it a hot pepper. It's not gonna blow your head off, but it is, you know, capsicum chinese which is, you know, a relative of the habanero, so it does have heat, but it also has a really unique, um, sweet, almost floral flavor, and it makes it really versatile where you can add it to, you can even add it to desserts, to chocolate ice creams, but then it also is spicy enough you can use it for, you know, your hot dishes, taco sauces, things like that. So I think it's the versatility and then the flavor of it just makes it super, super unique. And then what do you perceive to be the history? There's a lot of different stories out there of how it came to being here in St. Augustine. But what do you think it is? Um, you know, I, I think the most interesting and the best story is the Menorcans brought it from Menorca and it, it just flourished here and it became, you know, their pepper. But I have heard other stories of, you know, a hybridized strain from the Caribbean and even that it came from um, the Yucatan Peninsula and came over from slaves from the Yucatan Peninsula. University of Florida, they did some research on that, right? They did some research on it, was basically trying to kind of take some genetics and take some almost DNA of the pepper to try to backtrack where it came from. And most of the information they came up with did point from it coming from the Yucatan region. Let's just talk about more recent pioneers. Uh, Chris Way mm -hmm. comes to mind. Would you say that he was one of the first to actually take it from just a free thing that you see in a restaurant to uh, packaging it and taking it to a big level? Absolutely. I mean, Chris took the Daddle Do It brand and the Daddle Pepper Sauce, and at that time took it where no one else, everyone just thought, hey, this is a regional thing. You're going to find it in St. Augustine. Um, and they really embrace it here, but he was the first one to package it and market it where it could actually get out of the boundaries of Northeast Florida. That was the first daddle sauce that kind of broke out of the, you know, the 904 area. Chris Way is a true pioneer with the daddle pepper. Through his decades of experience with local restaurants and being the founder of Daddle Do It, he is no doubt an expert. I wanted to learn his take on the daddle pepper history. The daddle pepper over the course of being cultivated here and over time, the soil and whatever, um, they it develop certain characteristics visually. Um, they're usually like a real pale green and then when they ripen, they, they turn yellow. Um, and you know how the habanero is kind of like more like a little uh, green pepper shape, you know, kind of a, you know, like a miniature bell pepper where the daddle pepper is kind of elongated. And I haven't been able to find any pepper that resembles a daddle pepper anywhere else where I can say, oh, maybe these are cousins. But the closest one is the habanero. The legend around St. Augustine with me growing up was that the Menorcans brought it here from Menorca, you know? So when I started to do the research on it and started, you know, going to the historical society here and trying to find some, some link between the Menorcans or, or Menorca and this pepper, and I it, uh, couldn't be found. So then started talking to some people at the Historical Society and said more than likely that pepper made its way here 
through the Caribbean trade routes. I mean, it could have been Jamaica, it could have been Puerto Rico, Guatemala, I mean, you know, just somewhere along those, those southern trade routes where, you know, Cuba was a big trading place and people would come there with all kinds of stuff and then somebody would pick it up, take it to Miami or wherever and grow it. So what happened was the Menorcans made their way to St. Augustine and started growing them in their backyards and using them and then they started throwing them in dishes and then all of a sudden it's a, it's a local thing. Minorcan heritage keeps coming up as a connection to the Daddle Pepper and its history. I met up with Mike Osteen, AKA Minorcan Mike, to learn more about Minorca and his family history. So my heritage is from the island of Minorca off of Spain. And they came over in the late 1700s, landed in New Smyrna. They were indigent servants. And then they came to St. Augustine and uh, brought the Daddle Pepper with them. The pepper uh, came with the Minorcans. And growing up, you saw a lot of this, correct? Correct. I, I mean, we had, my grandfather grew them year round. He had hot houses where he would grow them. We had uh, hot sauce on the table all the time. He liked it super hot and we had to modify it to make it where people could actually eat it because uh, a lot of Menorcans like their food nice and spicy. When it comes to the daddle pepper, you know, there's a lot of, I guess, different concepts out there that maybe is part of the spice trades. Maybe it was part of I don't know, somebody bringing it, Minorcans, for example. What do you believe? I, I think the Minorcans brought it over with them. I think that they used them in Menorca, that they always cooked with them, and that was part of what they brought with them. And when they landed, they brought, say, hey, what are we gonna take with us? We need spices, we need to bring the pepper with us. And then they started growing it, and then they used it. And when they came to St. Augustine, of course, they brought it with them. And generations and generations of Minorcans, everybody has a daddle pepper plant in their yard. Minorcan immigrants bringing the daddle pepper over is a popular story. Others suggest that the daddle pepper shares similarities with the African pepper called the Vitali and was brought to America by the African slave trade. But another valid theory that is backed up with some historical data is that the daddle pepper was brought to St. Augustine in the late 1800s by a jelly maker from Cuba named S.B. Valls. One of the earliest references to the daddle pepper is from the St. Augustine record dating June 13, 1937. It states Mr. Valls acquired the seeds from Santiago, Cuba. Overall, the history is unclear of the exact origin. However, Minorcans played a pivotal role in growing the pepper locally and incorporating it in many dishes, ultimately influencing the food history of St. Augustine.